So the title of this talk is called Self-Portraits in JavaScript. I, I sort of enjoy coming up with titles that don't precisely hint at what I'm going to talk about, but maybe intrigue people to show up and figure it out. <laughs> this project is um, about a little side project that I have. My life is kind of all side projects, it feels like, sometimes. Um, and uh, well, we'll explore it together and you'll see, but basically it's an introduction to some interesting APIs and uh, facial recognition through this interesting side project that I have. Um, let's continue. Oops. Oh, there we go. First, though, I want to introduce myself a little bit more. You already know some boring facts about me. I can add a couple more boring ones and a couple more hopefully slightly interesting ones. I find that um, when developers humanize themselves a little bit, I tend to remember what they spoke about a little bit better later on. Uh, so with that said, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. I, my name is George. I've been a freelancer for about 13 years based out of Portland, Oregon. That's why I have a good eye for uh, raincoats that are on sale because it rains a lot in Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm also a Google developer expert. I feel like I should say that. It's a recent thing. It's kind of fun. Um, the last few years... <laughs> Google's not paying me to say that. I can... <laughs> um, uh, that said, though, the past three or four years, I've gravitated towards uh, more of a mentorship role in a lot of the things I do. Part of that includes speaking. Part of that includes running workshops and being a one-on-one -on -one mentor with uh, new developers and, and kids coding, like uh, Ramon said. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's something I enjoy, and if that's something you're interested in, I would love to connect with you about it later. Uh, my best known project, some speakers, uh, I'm always impressed with the things they've worked on or the companies they work for. The thing that I've worked on that is the most known is a silly Easter egg script I made like 10 years ago. Who's heard of Konami.js? I'm curious. Okay, I mean, I, I, that's about the number of hands I usually get, and I'm always pleased. Um, it, it's a silly Easter egg script that adds the Konami uh, code to your website. Obviously, that's kind of a web development 101 thing you would expect to see. Uh, in 2009, it was mildly more novel. It, I, I made it so it worked on smartphones, which at the time felt like an accomplishment. Um, and then, for whatever reason, it was just the first like easy-to-use, non-jQuery thing that you could just kind of drop into your project. And everyone started using that, including Marvel.com. And I got really excited. This is before all the movies and things, I think. Um, and so I made a little update to the thing right away uh, when I found this out. And I broke Marvel.com for like 10 seconds, because they were linking directly to the file on GitHub. So we all learned some lessons that day. Um, and then my last fun fact that maybe will help you remember this talk later is I once, oops. Oh dear, this clicker. <laughs> I'll explain this clicker, actually, in a minute here. So my last fun fact is I once ran a marathon in North Korea and I accidentally cheated. Um, <laughs> I don't really advocate cheating in general. Um, if you do accidentally cheat, you should be mindful of where you've accidentally cheated, perhaps. And there's my proof, my certificate. <laughs> nope, <laughs> not really, but that's what they thought. If you're, I'll, I can explain later if you really want to know. But more importantly, I, I like to make things. Um, I like to take the tools that are part of my day-to-day -day work and sort of push them to their limits and, and, create, and use them in ways that maybe they were not intended or ways that are not expected. I like making little art projects or little creative explorations just for my own amusement. I find through that process it helps me sometimes become a better developer. Um, it helps me come up with really cool, fun things I otherwise might not have. Um, and it gives me a lot of uh, stuff to talk about at places like RulerJS. Um, and so with that in mind, I'm going to tell you about something I made called, that I call self-portraits in JavaScript here. So the project, a self-portrait in JavaScript. So the inspiration. I was reading about, I was actually reading about the camera obscura and how those worked and Wikipedia progressed and anything like I like to do. And I stumbled across a different but related invention called the camera lucida. Who's, who's knows what a camera lucida is? It's, it's less known than the obscura. I find the principle is very similar. The way that I tend to explain it to people is it's kind of like looking at something in real life and tracing over it. There's a, like a polished mirror that sort of reflects through a lens onto what you're looking at. So you're able to like draw on a surface while seeing a reflection of some other object sort of overlaid on top of it. I thought this was cool. It was a cool idea. And I thought, well, that seems like something I could just make this morning while I'm you know, getting ready to start my day with JavaScript. 
Um, why not? And so I, you know, I thought, well, I could, you know, what could I do? I could take the, the webcam on my computer and the video element and overlay canvas on top and just make a simple drawing interface. That's, that seems fun. So I, I explored this idea. And my first attempt was something like this. Let's see, hit my pause button. There we go. And my face paused. And okay, yeah, that was pretty easy. Kind of gets kind of boring, gets to the point. You get the idea. Do, do, do. <laughs> I never said these were good self portraits. <laughs> That's the catch. <laughs> they get better slightly. And depending on how much time I spend on them, obviously. And then I thought, well, I need some way to sort of control the opacity. There we go. Here's my self-portrait. Perfect. Stunning likeness. Ooh. I did not deserve that applause. <laughs> and I can add yet another image that doesn't look like me. I don't know if you saw the photo of me with the beard and the pamphlet and things like that. Anyway. Um, oops. So that was my first attempt, and that was kind of easy. And then I thought, well, how can I you know, make this a little more interesting and webby? And I thought, well, maybe I could play with CSS filters and manipulate the video image to actually uh, you know, maybe outline the edges a little bit more. So here I'm playing with the contrast and the brightness. And that sort of you know, makes certain features pop. And then I can pause. And again, we're doing the same thing. But now it's a little bit easier to trace if that was my goal. The features I'd want to trace in this kind of way are a little more obvious. It actually starts to look kind of cool when it's overlaid on top of the actual thing like that. OK, that's cool. That's fine. And then I thought, could I make it a little more interesting? Could I, could I make the, the brush like, a little more artsy and, and unique? Could I do something else with the filters I haven't thought of yet? And I landed on this attempt, which honestly wasn't terribly different. I just added a color filter down here, because the color didn't really matter since I'm doing it all in black and white anyway. Play with the CSS filters a little bit more. I'll pause. Um, and then, I know, I, I've done this enough times that I know I can't just be speaking while I pause the image, otherwise I look really terrible. Uh, and then I have sort of an interesting, like, pointillism take that's all squiggly and moving, and, you know, different people have different opinions on it that I've shown it to, but I think it looks cool. I have fun with it. You saw that um, on the opening slide, recreating a, a doodle that I made here using this. And I'll do this, and I'll do that, and I'll do one more eyebrow. At first, I thought my talk would just be 30 minutes of me doing this and wait until someone speaks up. But <laughs> Do this, and then let's see what it kind of looks like. OK, that's kind of fun. That's interesting. So those are my first demos. And I thought, well, that's fun. That's interesting. But how can I make this? Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this could be better, I thought. This could be more programmery. This could be more. This could use more interesting things that I like reading about, um, you know, some more browser APIs and, and programming concepts I'd like to explore. I might as well explain this clicker now. So I like to make things, as I said on this slide. Uh, this slide, this clicker, <laughs> is actually a, uh, an Esperino. Who's heard of the Esperino? I'm curious. Yeah, OK, so it's a, it's a microcontroller that, you can, um, that can run JavaScript directly. There's a built-in JavaScript interpreter on this little computer. And so I programmed this to be recognized as a keyboard by my computer. And I'm using this just as a fancy clicker to go forward and backwards. And it started acting funny this morning when I go back and forth. So I might just abandon it for now and go like this. Sorry, little clicker. It served me well in the past. So this could be better. And I was thinking. You know, what if I could, instead of just making an interesting drawing tool or playing with CSS filters on the video element, what if I could actually recognize when there's a face looking at the camera? You know, what if I could do some kind of facial recognition and do something there? What if I could like actually identify aspects of the person looking into the camera, like take a guess to their gender or their age or maybe what mood they're in? Uh, maybe based on that information, I could do something like suggest a color palette or automatically tweak the brush settings to accommodate all those aspects in some way. Um, maybe I could do something, if I can recognize specific features on the face, like the nose and the eyes and the mouth, maybe there are ways I can highlight that or, or bring those to the forefront in a way that'll make it easier to draw. Or I think the more obvious question is maybe I could have the computer draw it for me. I mean, that seems like the real goal here, right? 
Um, and then I thought maybe this is something else I'd seen out there and have been starting to learn about. What if I could use some machine learning uh, style transfer stuff to take artwork I've made in the physical non-computer world and apply that style to a picture of my face and combine it with the stuff? And, and I thought, okay, now we're, now we're getting somewhere interesting. This is, this is a little more difficult and kind of fun. And that sent me down kind of a wormhole exploring facial recognition and detection in JavaScript and what that entails. And so I'm going to kind of dive into that with you and show you here. Um, there are basically three approaches you can take to facial recognition and detection in JavaScript. There are web-based services, um, basically the big companies you would expect are in this space. There's Microsoft, Azure, uh, Google Cloud Vision, Amazon. I think it's called recognition actually with a K, so even though that is correctly spelled, that is a typo. I apologize. <laughs> Um, and these, so these services, you can send your image data to them, and they will basically spit back a giant JSON object that describes all of the different things it sees in that image. Um, there, is, there are pure client-side approaches um, built on TensorFlow. Uh, .js mostly. Um, FaceAPI.js is a project that's built on TensorFlow that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. We can use that to recognize faces in the images. We can uh, recognize the expressions and, and extract features. Um, and then the third way that is really interesting to me is there is actually a native API called the Shape Detection API. Who's heard of this? I'm curious. Okay, cool. That's why I wanted to talk about this. Um, so it's experimental, actually. You have to go to the experimental. Uh, it's only, well, I should say, it's only in Chrome, for starters, for now, or any Chromium-based project. Um, and it's behind the experimental features flag, so you have to turn that on to be able to use it. But basically, it's a native browser API that allows us to detect faces and images and some other things. Um, just as easily as you might any other browser API like geolocation or media capture or, or anything of that ilk. So let me show you a little bit of what the code looks like with each of these different approaches. And uh, I explored all of these approaches towards making my, um, uh, my self-portrait project, which I'll show you here at the end. So um, let me show you what it entails if you want to use a web-based service like Azure Face API or Google Cloud Vision or Amazon Recognition uh, to do facial recognition in JavaScript. Now, technically this is JavaScript, but it feels like cheating, right? We're sending it off to a service and it's coming back. That's OK. So the first thing we have to do, now all the examples I'm going to show you are specific to uh, Azure because I talked about this in Microsoft Build, and I felt like I should probably use their services when I'm doing that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I used to have it in a different one. but. Um, but the principles are very, very similar whether you're using Cloud Vision or Amazon for the most part. So we have to prepare a bunch of parameters to send to their API. Um, the documentation obviously will tell you what those are. Those are, for the most part, reasonably straightforward. Um, there's lots and lots of different things you can ask for it to detect inside of the image that we're going to be sending, uh, you know, more than just where the nose and the eyes and the face are or whether or not there is a face in the image. Uh, it'll tell you uh, what the person is probably feeling or what their facial expression is suggesting, I should say, uh, whether or not they're wearing glasses, whether they're smiling, uh, all, all kinds of things. So we prepare those values. There's, that's just a snippet from an example that I had earlier. Uh, now, if we want to do this in an interactive way using the, um, uh, the, the webcam on a laptop, so we need, to, we need to basically take a still shot from the video element that we're uh, outputting our webcam content to on the page. So we basically take a snapshot of that and we store it on a canvas element somewhere else on the page. Um, once we've done that, then we need to get a data URI uh, of that snapshot of the canvas. And from that, we're going to create a blob. So we're going we're gonna to call fetch on the data URI that we got from the canvas element, get a blob, send that blob back to the web-based service, in this case, Azure, wait for a response, and then we get a giant JSON object, and we can do something interesting with that. It's kind of kludgy. It could be better, but even at its best, it's still a few hoops you got to jump through, I think. Let me show you what that looks like, not just the code that's more interesting. So here is an example of um, using the Azure Face API. I hope the conference Wi-Fi does not fail me. 
Okay, so here's my face. You're getting tired of it at this point. <laughs> we will find the faces. Okay. And now we're going to wait here and hope this... Okay, there we go. And so what you can see over here is... So we, we, all that code I just showed you happened. Uh, it sent the blob data to Microsoft Azure. It looked at the photo really quickly. It processed what it needed, what I requested it to process in those parameters, and then it sent back this giant JSON object with information about what it saw in the image. I used some of this response data to highlight my face in the image and to highlight specific points of, of specific landmarks on the face. You can kind of see where it gravitates around my eyes. It sort of outlines points on my nose and my mouth, and then I guess my temples, but I think it calls it something else. And if we look over here, this is the actual JSON response that Azure gave me when I made that request. So here we have, yeah, it's legible enough. Um, so we have all the different landmarks and the XY coordinates relative to the image that we sent it over here. Pupil left, pupil right, nose tip, which I guess is this one here. I don't know if you can really see it. Um, et cetera, et cetera, my eyebrows. Just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And then down here we get attributes. So here it's telling me whether some of the more interesting things beyond just where the, you know, where the things on my face are, which I already kind of knew having lived in this body. So it, um, it's, it, I, it's telling me that I'm smiling, which seems accurate. Um, it has identified my gender and age. The, the age identification is always eerie to me. I don't really know how it does that so well. Um, I have about six tenths of a mustache. <laughs> I think. That's actually not what that means. It's, it's actually a confidence interval, but I like to think it's six tenths of a mustache. It's 60% chance that I have a mustache. <laughs> it's like a weird weather report. Um, it can detect that I'm wearing glasses. If I take my glasses off and I run this again, here, I'll do this. <laughs> Funny look on my face. And we go back down there. Of course, I need to put my glasses on to really see it. <laughs> Let's see. No glasses. There we go. See, it's, it can detect when I'm wearing glasses. If I had a hat, we could do this all day. And then <laughs> this is what I'm feeling. It's decided that I'm, I'm feeling pretty neutral. There's no contempt or disgust. <laughs> In the moment, or was a, there's a little hint of happiness, maybe a 23, 24 percent chance of happiness, and then just some more general information about the quality of the image that we sent. Uh, and then I actually only noticed this one recently, but there's a makeup attribute, and I think the lighting must have been funny when I did this once because it said I was wearing lip makeup when I did this last time, which I promise you I was not, and it's it's just funny. Um, anyway, you you kind of get the idea at this point. Okay, and so just to compare that, let's do the same thing using Google Cloud Vision. Same principle, we're sending a blob, we're getting a JSON object. The only difference is Google Cloud Vision detects slightly different things. Um, well, you'll see, there's just a slight difference. So we're gonna do the exact same demo. I'll leave my glasses on. I feel like I should try to make a different expression. I, how, do you, how do you look like you have contempt? I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm smiling again because Oh, wait, oops. I don't know what I'm doing. OK. <laughs> I hope it says I'm confused. That would be great. Actually, no, confused would be a better look. There we go. <laughs> uh, OK, so say, you can see it's quite fast, even though it um, has to send and wait for the response. So again, we get the uh, coordinates in a slightly different format. Um, I've highlighted my face and the different features over here, as you can see. It's identified the landmarks. It, it does it in a different format than Azure, but the dots more or less end up kind of landing in the same place. You know, someone, I, I can't really speak to the quality or effectiveness of the difference there, honestly, for my needs. And if we go to the bottom, that's where the fun stuff is. Oh, but my right ear, Trageon, is superb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad nobody else probably knows what that is based on the laugh, because <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, let's see, detected confidence landmark. Oh, joy likelihood, very unlikely. <laughs> that's disappointing. I, I am feeling a lot of joy, that's not true. Um, anger likelihood. I feel, so if I, make, if I try to actually make an angry face, let's see if it makes a difference here. Let's see. OK, well, that might be discussed. Who knows? Let's see if it makes any difference here. 
No, I did not seem to hit any of them. Anyway, we'll play more with that in a little bit, perhaps. So you kind of get the idea of how those APIs work. That's the web-based services um, approach. So some of the advantages, it's very featurist, and it's surprisingly fast given what's going on, um, given how much data you get back. Uh, obviously, you're heavily, the disadvantage would be you're heavily dependent on whatever service provider you're using. We're sending all of our data to one of those big three companies, it seems, all the time. I don't feel crazy about that. Um, uh, requires a request, which could be potentially expensive. You could, this demo could work on a mobile phone pretty easily, um, but obviously the quality of mobile phones varies wildly. You know, it could be, um, and data plans vary and all that. So you have to keep that in mind. And that initial setup that I showed you at the beginning is kind of kludgy. There's a lot of fetches and a lot of weird stuff you kind of got to do. Okay, so now let's look at some of the pure client-side approaches. These are kind of cool. So using faceapi.js, we can do an entire a version of this that is entirely in the browser. Um, it's really great. So we can, uh, you know, just include the file in our in our project. Have a video element that we're going to um, capture our uh, webcam content and spit it out to. And then we have a function that looks something like this. So we have to initiate the models. Basically, you're downloading pre-trained models of a whole bunch of different faces. So that, that's the part of the process that takes a very long time. With faceapi.js, you're basically using pre-existing models, and that's saving you a lot of time. That said, you still have to load them into the browser, um, get them ready to use. That takes a few moments. So once those are ready, though, um, then it's pretty easy to call. We can pass the video element directly. We don't have to do any of that crazy data URI double fetch nonsense. Um, and so this, feels, this is starting to feel more like it belongs in my browser. You know, I can just send the video element to it directly or an image element. Uh, and then I get the results here and I can act on those. So let me show you real quick what that looks like. Same sort of thing. I'm going to hurry up because I realize I'm dragging a little bit. So we'll do this. Now, so this one takes a little longer. Surprisingly, even though it's happening all on my machine. Oh, let me do it. Sometimes it misses. There we go. That's a little better. Hopefully you can. OK. And I'm expecting a little object here, but maybe it's not going to show up. Let me try this one more time. Or maybe I'm just mistaken. Well, yeah, so we, we get a similar JSON object, and we get these different parameters. What's nice about faceapi.js is it gives us some methods that allow you to, as you can kind of see, like outline the different features. We don't get nearly as many features as we get with a web-based service like Google or Azure, but um, it's not bad. It's kind of fun. Okay. And so one of the advantages is no request. That can, that's happening entirely on my machine. I could be offline, and that demo would still work. That's very cool. Um, you could theoretically train your own models and create a web page that is set up to recognize your face specifically. You could also theoretically train it to recognize new features, um, like contempt or disgust or whatever. Um, disadvantages, it's slow to initially load, depending on your machine. This is a year-old MacBook Pro or so, so like, I mean, it's reasonably fast, but if you try it on a much slower machine, it's going gonna, it's gonna to drag. Uh, it's computationally expensive. Your laptop will warm your lap during the winter months. It can, the fan kicks on pretty quickly sometimes. And so let me talk about the last one, the shape detection API. Now, technically, this is all client side too, but it's kind of an anomaly. So it, I'm counting it as its own separate thing. So the shape detection API, um, it, it not only is going to allow us to detect faces and images, but things like barcodes and extract text from images too. Um, it's baked into any Chromium-based project, so it's in Chrome, obviously, uh, Chromium, Microsoft Edge, and uh, even uh, Electron. If you um, set up your Electron app to use the experimental flags, this will work. And it downloads all the models locally. There's no calls going off to like secret hidden Google services or something. It's all like baked into the thing, which is cool. And so the code looks kind of like this. Uh, it's just a feature that we try to detect. Sorry, your browser does not support it if I don't find it. And then we have a function that looks like this, and all we do is pass an image object. Oh, geez. <laughs> Forgot that wasn't real text. I was trying to click it. Um, all we do is uh, we pass an image object directly to this face detector um, class, and it returns a JSON object with the faces that it found. It's, that's basically all the code. It's the most straightforward approach. It's kind of beautiful. It's great. Um, oh, yeah, then for each face, we can do something with it there. 
And so let me show you what that looks like. This seems like, you know, the best option, right? Um, okay, so that was really fast, obviously, as you could tell. There are a few trade-offs. It recognized where my face was. It gets that generally right. If you zoom in on those features, that's a bug. That's, that's not my code. That's a problem at the moment. I mean, it is my code, but it's a problem with the state of this API at the moment. It's experimental. It, it, I don't really know the rhyme or reason for where it decides these landmarks are. I've tried a lot of different things. I've spent a lot of time on GitHub and browsing the internet. It just isn't working right now, unfortunately. What's sad is like a year ago it was working. But um, yeah, so I mean, this, when it works, will be very cool. Uh, so disadvantage, okay, so the advantage, it's very simple, it's very fast, as you saw. The disadvantage um, would be it's unclear when this might actually go into production. It's buggy, uh, and it's very feature limited. We're not getting things like, you know, the likelihood of my contempt bundled into that JSON object. We're just getting a general coordinate for where my face is, my eyes, nose, ears, mouth, et cetera. And for most applications, that's probably enough, but um, yeah, so that's where that is. So I talked a lot, those are all the different approaches I explored. I spent a lot of time reading about those. This is all just based on my initial desire to do a self-portrait in JavaScript. Um, so let me show you what the, I don't want to call it final, but the latest version of that project ended up. So I made it larger, I decided, and I added a bunch of options. So let's see here. I'm gonna do this and do that. And I think I'm gonna use the, I'll use the face API GS face detection method and I'll freeze my video. There we go. <laughs> and so now I'm gonna highlight the landmarks and see how it does here. Takes a moment, oh, cool. So now we have that effect. It looks, it kind of missed my mouth, but I don't know. That's just how it goes sometimes. Um, and then that interface I made from before Still works, and I can start to add to my drawing here. Do it like this, get something like that. This and that. And then maybe I'll go back to this. I won't spend too much more time doing this. Yeah, we got the start of something here. And then I can download that, do this. There we go, that's my start of my self-portrait. If you spend a lot of time, you can actually make something a little more interesting. <laughs> um, I'm starting to run over, so I will rush really quickly through this last thing. There is another feature I'm trying to add to this that I hinted at earlier. I've been, um, who's heard of magenta.js? I'm curious. Okay, magenta.js is really cool. It is, um, it's a Google project, and it is uh, basically leveraging machine learning and TensorFlow specifically for creative art projects. Um, and there's a really cool feature you can use called Neural Style Transfer, where basically you can feed it one image. It will it'll create a model that ascertains the, the style of that image, and then you can apply it to another image. Uh, the effect sometimes ends up like sort of a chintzy Photoshop looking filter, but sometimes it's really interesting. And so I'm still working on integrating it into my self-portrait tool, but let me give you a sneak peek of what that looks like. There's my conference photo, it looks nothing like me anymore. Uh, this is a generative art thing that I made uh, using P5 a while ago that I think is kind of fun. And basically I can ascertain the style of this and then apply it to this and create a different kind of a self-portrait. Let's wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Isn't that cool? I mean, I don't, I can't take credit for that, so, but I, <laughs> the code is actually incredibly easy, but I, you can waste, so let me just show you like a couple more. So that's something I made. Um, I took, uh, the effects are kind of hit and miss. That one's my favorite. This is a, it's actually a painting my mother made. I like using that one sometimes. Um, hit and miss, kind of cool. And then I'll show you one more maybe. Uh, which one is the one that looks cool? <laughs> oh, this one, yeah. Sometimes it's fun to say something that's just completely, you know, super abstract and apply that and see what it looks like. It's kind of interesting, I don't know. Or you can take something famous like this and apply it. This is like the demo that it comes bundled with and 
also hit and miss. The larger you, your images are, the sources and the one you're applying it to, the better the quality is, but also it takes exponentially longer. That's why they're so tiny up here, so I could do this in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I kind of showed you my project and the wormhole I went down looking into facial detection in JavaScript. Quick thoughts on privacy. It's not also portraits and silly demos. I, it just had me thinking that, like, it's very easy to make something that can recognize someone's specific face, and I feel like we're not... We need to be uh, just careful as we play with this stuff. Um, you know, I'm thinking about like the protests going on in Hong Kong and the facial recognition that's being used there. Uh, I don't know, this is not popular in Europe, but it's very popular in the US. So many people have these, and it's basically a camera on your doorbell. Uh, Amazon owns it, and I was reading articles recently how they're, work, they're working with like local law enforcement to recognize faces and people who go by your house. And all this stuff is just kind of un, nobody's like, uh, I don't know, nobody's, um, it's not all fun and games, and I feel like we should just talk about it. That's all. So I wanted to throw these up. Uh, what's kind of funny, though, is a really easy way to uh, defeat this facial recognition for now is makeup. That look <laughs> Believe it or not, this actually is like, it turns out that Juggalo makeup is like perfect makeup to uh, block facial recognition, which is kind of funny. Um, anyway, so in summary, uh, there are three main ways to do facial recognition and detection in JavaScript. Um, and that fourth, well, yeah, the fourth thing is let's not ignore some of the privacy issues this raises. Uh, thank you very much. If you want to play with the self-portrait thing I made later, I'm going to post it online. I'll tweet about it so you can follow me there. So thank you. Danke. Thank you.